Morning folks, Monday afternoon, three o'clock. And I won't say I've done now because I've been going like the clappers because I've had a huge dog day and also done a poo run. So here's a little repair which might get done this week. It's the Magimix French made food processor. Now this model is the early model, it's over probably over 20 years old. Mechanically and electrically it's still brilliant but the plastic's beginning to give up the ghost and the plastic switch around has quit so these are just pushing switches so I can just put a little aluminium plate in there and push the switches back into it. I will of course change the flex from a two core to a three core and then I'll put a little earth to the aluminium plate just in case. Although the rest of it is double insulated, uh, properly double insulated. I must add, not like lots of the Chinese made double insulated stuff that you get nowadays which uh, they leave the outer sheathing on the cable right up to the switches and where the switches are they put two layers of sleeving on and then they call it double insulated and they get, they get away with it. That Stuff like that shouldn't be sold in this country but there you go, that's just me having a rant. Right, I'm now going back to Wicarney to put a trailer plug on the trailer because the one that's on is knackered, have a cup of tea and then I should be going home. Nothing will be done today apart from everything I've already done. Bye now. Afternoon folks, 12.30, Tuesday afternoon, miserable weather. It's been raining, it's going to rain some more. I'm not going to try even try and do the roof today because of that. So it's a whole afternoon on the Holbrook. Won't you be pleased? Well, I will anyway. Right, I think maybe the first thing I'm going to do is to clean up some bits <coughs> and get some bloody paint on them. It being a damp, low pressure, miserable day and the worst possible day you could ever pick to paint, I'm going to paint. Then they're all sitting there waiting for me to waiting for me to assemble them because I can get a lot of stuff assembled. As soon as I've got some got a coat of paint on them, I'm gonna carry on straightening this nasty bent shaft out. Right, so on we go. Bring you back when I've done some it. Bye now. There we go folks. All the paint's off. And they're ready for painting first coat, which will be probably red oxide primer. I started those at one o'clock. It's now, he said, trying to get his watch to work, 3.57, nearly four o'clock. Three hours of solid cleaning. Both sides, of course, all parts, but what a bloody filthy job. This black stuff is like, uh, I've been wearing a mask because this is probably, this will definitely be lead rich. This black stuff is like, I don't know, distemper of some sort. When you put white spirit on it, it softens it. As soon as it dries out, it hardens up again. But it does give you a chance to sand it. And that's what I've done. So, I think we're going to try a coat of red lead on there and see what happens. I might, I might brush it on the inside, there's still white spirit in there, look. I might brush it on the insides and then spray it on the outsides. Just give them a coat of brushed red lead on the inside and then uh, let them have it. I've got some careful masking up to do first, so that one's masking up. That one's masking up around there. Uh, that one's masking up really. I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. That one's masking up. Because that's where, here is where the brake pad goes. So that wants to be bare metal to uh, 
let me bond on a brake pad made out of uh, some sort of brake material and it's been really really quiet for three days and then half an hour ago little feet came running down here like the bloody devil was after them two of them at least two of them maybe three but at least two right and I've banged them banged them banged on the roof and they haven't gone out I'm now beginning to suspect that they've eaten their way through the outside skin, the old felt roof, and they're now living under the, uh, between the felt roof and the metal roof. So come spring, that's going to have to come off. In the meantime, I'm going to get in touch with environmental health because I'm not having this anymore. I've had enough of it. Right, folks, I'm going to get some paint clapped on these and I'll see you in a bit. Bye now. Well, that's it, folks. It's five o'clock. I've got the first coat on, that's brushed on, that's, uh, that's a red oxide primer filler right? and it's made a good job so I'll give that, uh, that'll be drying tomorrow whilst I'm uh, doing the dogs again and then I shall be down here in the afternoon, I shall leave it to dry probably all tomorrow and I'll be back on this tomorrow. So it's back on to straighten the thread out. So, see you all tomorrow. Bye now. Afternoon folks, Wednesday afternoon. Good result from yesterday's painting. I'm just going to paint these bits, which I forgot about. And I think that's it all painted, apart from that piece, which I think is probably a light bracket so that's neither in really there for now right a coat of paint on onward I'll bring you back when I've done it right folks that's all painted up and uh, when those two are dry we're ready for a coat of black I have got this fixed. Right, I can't actually show you that. Can I show you that? Yes, there we go. And I thought I had, I might just stick that in the lathe and just see if I can neaten that up a bit. That brown, that brazing there because that just seems, it's just a little bit rough. I might be able to, I think I'll be able to put a round form tool into there or a, a radius tool and just just neaten a bit of that off and I've also I'm working on at the moment this which is a bit bruised and battered but at least it's legible and I'm gonna I think I'm gonna just leave it with this damage on it because you can't really do a great deal with it you start to fight it down because you immediately start to lose metal and lose your lose your markings on it but there you go so what I want to do is take this brass shim back with me and cut some little brass shims to go at the other side of that screw just to uh, put some friction on so that it drags. Now then when I've got that done I'm probably going to have to do a bit of shaping not with the shaper on there or on that horrible butchered side to uh, make sure that that pulls up against the shoulder of there without uh, binding on the uh, on the micrometer ring because if we don't do that that's going to bind and it's going to drag the uh, micrometer around with it instead of actually the micrometer ring being stuck to the shaft. Now we can come back to there quite easily so with plenty of meat to go at this is just a temporary Whitworth screw I've put in there I will probably put a I'll probably put a, a slotted screw in there to uh, finish that off I don't know what's happened to the I don't even know if this is the right one it does look like the right one but 
it could be off anything really. This uh, this keyway is a bit. Oh, I can't turn it because I've got the. There we go. This keyway here that is now on completely the wrong side. That keyway there, as you can see, is quite knocked about. Don't know what the hell's happened there, but anyway, I can make it right. I can make it right. So that's it for today. Oops. So is that on the floor? That's Wednesday all gone. And uh, I'll see you all tomorrow. And with any luck, I shall get all this done. I'm going to take that home with me and cut some little bits of brass shim out with a pair of uh, a pair of wood uh, not wood punch wood punch pliers. Those. Uh, leather pliers but I'll have to soften this brass first but that's no big deal I thought if I made two or three to go under there and uh, put a little kink in each one it would act as a spring now John says there is a tiny spring to go down there so I might see if I can get it doesn't really look to be room but there might be there might be so I might just get a little spring as well and try that but anyway, I'll take that home and cut three of those out. Right, see you all tomorrow. Bye now. Afternoon, folks. Friday afternoon, 3.40. We're a bit light on content this week. As I showed you before, I've got all these done now. These are all dry. So uh, they'll get some black next week. I've just been to uh, the local wood merchant and got two sheets of this sterling board which together make up the correct thickness uh, to replace the piece of board that is missing or that has got wet uh, I haven't looked in here all week but it's been raining fairly heavily it's raining very heavily now it's just been a downpour but I don't think we've got any leaks at all apart from the obvious it hasn't leaked any water anyway there's nothing run down that wall so that's very pleasing uh, it is well covered up well well covered up yeah there's nothing on there at all it's dry as a bone so that's very pleasing there is possibly a window Monday and Tuesday where there's supposedly gonna be no rain but if you believe that you believe anything I mean Today was supposed to be fairly dry, and look at it, look at it, this is just, we just got those boards back from Driffield and into the workshop just in time, and it's now pouring down again, so there you go, right, that's it I'm afraid, it's time to cover over, cover over the poor old Holbrook for another week. I must admit I've been completely preoccupied with those bloody rats this week. I really can't relax or, or concentrate on anything. It's really doing my head in. Uh, so I've got to get them sorted. It's been quiet again. I've heard nothing in the roof. Uh, it's up here that they're running. And I've heard nothing. So... I don't know, maybe the poison, we did put a lot of poison inside that root. Let's hope it's got them. But the problem is, all it takes is for another lot to turn up. And as long as there's food, there'll be rats. So, what we have to do is repair the holes that they've chewed in the bottom of the walls. And I can't get to the holes because they're behind other buildings. So it's going to be, it's going to have to be... Uh, environmental health intervention I think and get it all sorted out because the damage that's been done to this building is just ridiculous and it's all down to just carelessness couldn't care less you know couldn't care less right thank you all for watching thank you for liking send me a like subscribe subscribe because I'm going to be doing interesting things in the future 
I've, re I've realised that somehow I've lost the screw that goes in there. I can't have lost it. It's got to be here somewhere. I'm going to have a concerted look for it, but it isn't where I thought it would be in the in the box of uh, the box of wonderful things. It's a domed screw, and it fills that completely. It's a OBA zero BA screw, and it fills that hole completely. So, but that's by the by. That's done. That's done. That's done. We're on with this. And I've been thinking about this shaft. I've been thinking about this shaft. I can get that yet straighter. Because well, there's a gear on it just here. There's the gear on it that picks up the feed from the uh, apron. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap that gear in a piece of copper. I'm going to cut some copper pipe open. Wrap it around that gear. And then I'm going to put it in the over there covered up in the dark Kovmac. I'm going to put a clock on it and then I'm going to bring the tool post on the Kovmac up to the end of the shaft and push it and then try revolving it again and push it and revolve it again until I get it absolutely as close to being straight as I can because I'd sort of given up because I can sort of get away with it at that but I'm pretty sure I can make it a bit better and if I have to heat it up I'll heat it up. I can even, I've even got access at the moment to oxyacetylene, although I don't want to go that mad. But I could, I could, uh, to be honest, at this end, it's not hard. This is, this is very soft. This could almost be mild steel. It files very easily. Where I've been taking all the burrs and the lumps out of it. There's also, there's a, I believe there's a pin in there that's sheared off, but it might just be a screw mark. So I'd have to look at that. It's a it's a bit of a mess, whatever it is. This also is wrong. If that is a hole in there, I wouldn't be at all with a sheared off pin in it. I wouldn't be at all surprised if this screw that goes in there is supposed to have a pin on the end that fits into that hole, because that has a key in it. That has had a key in it. That shaft has had a key in it, but this handle has had no key in it. And this handle does look like the right one, although it's just a ball handle, isn't it? It could be up anything. See, what I thought of doing was turning that round. But, in conversation with John Burke, I've come to the conclusion that there's a part missing. The thimble go, micrometer thimble goes on there, that comes back to this shoulder, and there appears to be another component between the back of the thimble and the ball handle. And I don't know what it is. So I've asked John if he will kindly take me some photographs of his spindle. Just that bit disassembled. Uh, and we can see if we can make one. Right, I was saying goodbye. I was winding up. Doesn't that look nice with those spanners in it? Right, I was winding up. I still can't remember whether to paint that white like it originally probably was because it seems that all inside the castings were white well mine going to be red but never again right i'll try and say goodbye again thank you for all for watching thank you for subscribing please subscribe please send me a like please send me a comment and i'll see you all next week and i hope that next week i'll get a lot more done bye now